All right, today on Tree Talk, we are discussing Magnolia virginiana, Sweet Bay Magnolia. So Sweet Bay Mag Magnolia uh, is pretty common in the southeastern United States, and then it kind of creeps up the coastal plain. We have it a little bit uh, in the wild in Pennsylvania, uh, southeastern Pennsylvania where I live, um, down here where we currently are in the coastal plain of the southeast, uh, pretty common. Um, the further south you get, uh, the bigger and the more tree-like it gets. Uh, and as you go north, it kind of turns into more of a multi-stem shrub. So this specimen we're looking at here is a pretty large multi-stem shrub. Um, we're probably, oh boy, uh, close to 30 feet tall or so. And that's this is pretty much the, the maximum size that you'll see up in Pennsylvania uh, where, uh, where I live. Um, uh, it can get up to very tree-like, um, and I've read up to 90 feet tall, uh, kind of, you know, tree, a canopy tree size, uh, all the way down in Florida. Uh, another thing similar with the, the latitude, um, there's a big difference, uh, the leaves. So the leaves are um, very persistent in the north, um, or the, the mid-Atlantic, I guess, the northern extent of the range. Um, they'll help hold on after Thanksgiving, kind of even through Christmas, they'll hold on, um, uh, but then they'll fall off. So they are kind of fully deciduous, um, but in the south they are uh, closer to evergreen. Um, uh, you know, a leaf does not last longer than a year, but there's always new leaves replacing it. Uh, leaves are kind of growing, um, new leaves are growing at, at, uh, or being held throughout the entire year. Um, so on the note of those leaves, let's take a look at them real quick. So they are pretty large, um, they are pretty thick, they're kind of waxy, sort of leathery, um, but all of those features, they are not as thick, as large, as waxy, um, and leathery as Magnolia grandiflora would be. Um, I, I've seen a Magnolia grandiflora around here, so I'll, I'll get a picture of one later and I'll compare it to one of these leaves. Their leaves are kind of this big uh, and super leathery and thick. Um, the buds I find to be pretty distinctive. They're kind of, they're sort of whitish um, and they sort of have that paintbrush tip sort of look, not quite as much as, uh, you know, our pawpaw does, but uh, kind of looks more like a paintbrush tip. Um, the twigs, they get these striations in them they're kind of this brownish almost greenish color um and yeah they get these striations i have noticed um uh, i don't know if these are lenticels these little white things i thought they were scale on the ones that i was often looking at but they might be lenticels actually um another identifying trait so the fruit is um uh, aggregates of follicles so and then i think there is one on the tree but so this is one from last year. They hold these little red follicles in there. There is kind of a waxy fruit. Um, uh, they, they're bright red when they're ripe. Um, they get gobbled up by birds pretty quickly, I've noticed. Um, and then they leave these, uh, these things behind, these little kind of cones. Um, so here's one over here too, um, still on the tree. So uh, all the fruit has been gobbled up by our local birds, um, but uh, the, the aggregate is uh, remaining. Um, they, their flowers are pretty big. Uh, and again, so comparing it to Magnolia grandiflora, the, the follicles are a lot bigger, um, the, or the aggregates of follicles on Magnolia grandiflora. And also the flowers are a lot bigger on Magnolia grandiflora, but these ones are, are pretty big, maybe this big or so. Uh, they're white, they're super fragrant. I usually smell them before I see them. Um, and the, uh, the pollinators love them, I've noticed. And they open up um, oh, probably early May or so, maybe late April, early May. So kind of on the earlier end uh, for, our, for a lot of our woodies. Um, let's take a quick look at the bark. Um, it's going to be hard to get to because this is, uh, you know, because it's so X current, there's a lot of stuff kind of coming up underneath. But you can look in here, um, very smooth. This is, you know, I've never seen the really big ones personally, myself, um, down in, say, Florida. Um, but uh, they always have very smooth bark from uh, everyone that I've seen. I, I believe it stays pretty smooth uh, with this kind of mottled gray pattern um, throughout the whole range. Um, but yeah, so uh, for something that is kind of a large shrub, small tree, um, you know, we, it has a lot of the traits that you would kind of think of for natural history. Um, when it is more of a tree form, it actually, it, the wood can be used. Um, and it's a magnolia like tulip poplar. So the actually has very similar wood qualities and uses as tulip poplar. Um, it's kind of funny to me, cause again, I, in Pennsylvania, I think of this as just kind of a tall shrub, uh, more than a tree. 
Um, uh, it is, the birds do love to eat those fruits. Um, the pollinators do love the flowers, so it has a good wildlife use. Um, ha as far as habitat goes, uh, really a, a very wet loving species. Um, I mostly have seen it in the wild in very swampy areas uh, and kind of usually right on the edge. It's sort of moderately shade tolerant. It's hanging out in the shade here of a couple sweet gum trees, um, doing just fine, um, but it really, you know, it does like to have has some good sun, um, and it's, uh, I'd say, moderately fast-growing. Not a, not a really a rocket, um, but it's not a very slow grower either. Um, I think one of the t top uses of it, uh, and you know, maybe it's really, really used for that pulpwood uh, down in the south, uh, but I see it pretty commonly as a native landscaping plant, and it does very well. It's pretty well-behaved, uh, especially, you know, in that northern extent where it's not getting too big, but flowers are beautiful, the leaves are, are, are really pretty and sort of different, um, and I, uh, one thing I didn't really point out too, they have a very shiny sort of waxy white color on the leaf bottom that's pretty distinctive, but um, uh, these leaves are hard to mistake. They kind of, they do not seem like, you know, you're not going to confuse this for a, a, another leaf. It looks like a magnolia leaf. Uh, but there you have a sweet bay magnolia, a really lovely one, and uh, cool to see it out here in the wild, uh, getting pretty big and uh, really enjoying uh, where it's, where it is, so. There you have it, Magnolia Virginiana.